Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome. We are going to start a playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3, their finest hour. This is something I have been meaning to get to for quite a while, and while I have played a fair amount of Hearts of Iron 3, I have not done a uh, Let's Play series on it. So let's see how far we get here. We will we'll go single player, we will leave all of the options on player control and or normal, and we will pick the historical Road to War start, which is January 1st, 1936. And we are going to play Germany. Now, I think there's a lot of good reasons to play Germany. Um, they're an interesting game uh, country to play in Hearts of Iron or in any particular strategic level World War II game. Uh, in Hearts of Iron 3 in particular, which can be a relatively intimidating game because of its depth, um, I think Hearts of uh, Germany is, is really appropriate because it is Germany that sets the tone for everyone else. Um, they are going to set the pace of the war through those decisions and we are going to operate at a somewhat accelerated pace but not too much. So I do have a plan here. Um, you're gonna have to bear with me. Uh, I will let you know in the beginning of a new episode whether it's gonna be a boring episode with me, with me shuffling around the order of battle or not. This will not be a tutorial series but I will try to explain things as I go as best I can so hopefully it will be informative to the uh, somebody a little less experienced in Hearts of Iron 3 than I am. I'm not an expert by any means, uh, but I've played a fair amount of it, particularly as Germany, so I have a pretty good handle on what's going to happen. So, we start the game in uh, January 1936, and the clock is paused, um, so let's uh, take a look at what we need to do here. I'm going to open up Diplomacy first, because there's something important I wish to do with the USA, and that is to influence them towards our faction. Now, there are three factions in the game, the common turn, the allies, and the Axis, uh, basically representing communism, democracy, and fascism. We are the faction leader for the Axis, the British are the faction leader for the allies, and the French, and actually all these countries are already allied members. So Britain and France, Iraq, who is a British satellite this time, Oman, Yemen, Bhutan, and Nepal. And I don't know, but I imagine most of them are British satellites at this time. The common turn, of course, has the Soviet Union, Mongolia, which is a Soviet satellite at this time, and Tenu Tuva, which is a little independent state that we may or may not ever notice on the border between the Soviet Union and Mongolia. Uh, I think it was after the war, I believe it was formally absorbed by the Soviet Union. So that's all we really needed to do in democ uh, diplomacy, but I do want to point out these national decisions that we can make. The two uh, that will come up relatively soon are the reoccupation of the Rhineland, which will happen this episode, and the Anschluss with Austria, which will probably not happen until about 1937, which uh, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that's episode three or four. So we're done with that. We want to next go to intelligence. We're going to increase our spy priority domestically. And we want to maximize counter-espionage. And we also want to put a pip in support ruling party. Now, also, looking at the major countries, let's look at neighbors first, because Austria gets maximized. And we put one in counter-espionage and three in support our party, because when we can perform the Anschluss depends on how quickly we can get the Nazi party uh, popular support in Austria, which should start out slow and then start to build as it accumulates power. So we're going to put one pip in Belgium, one, uh, three pips in France, one pip in the Netherlands, one pip in Poland, one pip in Switzerland. Uh, we'll do support our party in Switzerland. I don't think that's going to be any of any use. Uh, we'll do military espionage in Belgium and the Netherlands and then we'll go to majors and we'll maximize the Soviet Union and the USA as well we'll put two pips in the UK and Italy and Japan I'm not gonna bother with uh, you know what I'll put one pip in each of those so in France we want one counter espionage and we want maximize disrupt national unity their national unity is probably not this is our estimate uh, intelligence estimate of how their national unity is and this is a percentage that is the percentage of the total victory points in the country 
at which they will surrender. So I at this point, uh, if their national unity was 100, I'd have to take all 100% of all their victory points. Um, but it's 29.1, allegedly, so I only have to take 29% of their victory points. Now, I doubt seriously that it's quite this low. I have played France, actually, and I doubt that it's that low. So in Italy, we're going to do a counter-espionage mission. And in Japan, we're going to do a counter-espionage mission. The Soviet Union will put one in counter-espionage and three in increased threat because we want the Soviet Union to be very threatening. Uh, in the USA, we'll put two in counter-espionage for the moment and two in support our party. And with any luck, you notice the German-American Bund has 4% support right now, which isn't much, but uh, it will grow from there. And actually, that's not such a bad start. I think I'm going to go put three there and two there. And then in the UK, we're going to go with tech espionage and counterintelligence. And let's see. Now, and we got some, some warnings up here. Uh, we, we don't have any research yet, so that's what that is. We can also theoretically uh, implement this new law mixed industry, but it doesn't do us that much good, and we don't have the money to do it anyway. You see it costs 54.0 money. We have 40 money up here. That the number is green, it means that the balance is in the positive. If it were red, we'd be losing it every turn like we are with supplies here. So let's go to technology next. Uh, we have 140% officers, off of, that is an officer ratio. Um, because that is the cap, I'm going to turn officers completely off for the moment. And I'm going to turn diplomacy down to 2, but then I'm going to put this up to 1.1. You know what, I'm going to leave it at 2 for now. Right now we're getting 2.08 spies per day. I will leave it at 2 for now, which leaves us 14.38 for research. And I'll lock these sliders by right-clicking on them so they won't move around. Now, let's see what we need to do for research, because there's quite a bit. Let's start with small arms. We need mechanized infantry as soon as possible. So we need to, first of all, research these four light armor technologies and these four light infantry technologies. We also want self-propelled artillery as soon as possible, so we need to... Th that will apply to these. We're going to build quite a bit of artillery early in the game, so we'll take these two as well. And part of my stri And we actually, I think, want this malicious small arms tech as well. We'll just do two of those at the moment. And right there, there's 12. Boom. Um, we'll do one of those at the moment. Part of my strategy here is going to involve um, building up a significant navy. And we're going to build a battleship-oriented navy. So we're going to go, let's see here, battle cruiser stuff, heavy cruiser stuff. We are going to go, I think, with battleships. So we'll build these two battleship technologies and destroyers. So we'll go with destroyer armor, destroyer engine. And we're at 15 already, so we're actually going to leave it there for now, because um, we're we're we, we're putting 14.38 leadership into research right now. So we're anything else we stack into this queue is not going to make any progress right now anyway. So that's fine. Now we also have a warning here about IC that's being wasted. So let's take a look at production. We need 12.86 uh, consumer goods. Uh, we were putting in like 50 some. Now I like to put this where it needs to be and then increase it just a little bit because this number will tend to fluctuate a little bit up and down and I don't want to get caught if my I'm not making enough consumer goods this descent number will go up and that too is a percentage and it comes right off my industrial capacity which is which is no bueno so we need zero reinforcement we'll leave that there we need 12.29 supplies we'll leave that there uh, we need 36.08 Upgrades, we'll leave that there. So we lower lock and everything except lend lease, which doesn't get any points for Germany normally, and production. And right now, here's what we have in the production queue a heavy cruiser, the Graf Spee, uh, a uh, flotilla of, I shouldn't say flotilla, I should say squadron of destroyers, uh, the Sturgeschwader, and a um, flotilla of U boats. Uh, we'll leave these in the queue. Uh, these are actually valuable to us. 
so by my reckoning, I need 65 infantry divisions, 25 garrison divisions, 10 armored divisions, 5 mountain divisions, um, plus 30 miscellaneous artillery brigades. So let's start with the artillery brigades. And we're going to make 120 days. So if we make them in three serial months. Now there's two ways to manufacture stuff. You can either do it in parallel, number one at the same time as number two, at the same time as number three, so you're making all three at once, or serial, so number one, then number two, then number three. So we're going to make these in three serial runs of ten. And extraordinarily importantly for this part of the game, we need to make them as reserves because that will like substantial that will cut the IC cost basically in half. And the manpower cost basically in half. Now I'll have to mobilize to get them up to full combat strength when I think I'm going to war, but that's okay. Right now it's the IC that's more important. Okay, so we're st we're still wasting uh, a boatload, 97.93 on production, but we're going to leave that where it is for now because now we're going to go take a look at a couple of things down here. If we go back to diplomacy and look at the reoccupation of the Rhineland, we'll see the conditions. If you hover over the question mark, you'll see the conditions for the national decision. To reoccupy the Rhineland, I need to uh, meet a bunch of conditions, meaning I'm at peace with France, I'm not an ally of France, and I have to have occupied one province in two lists of provinces uh, in each of them. So I need to have somebody, and I see I, you have, I have somebody in Karlsruhe, um, so I need to occupy either Baden-Baden, Offenburg, Freiburg, or Lorach. And those provinces are here. Nope, they're down here. Baden-Baden, Offenburg, Freiburg, or Lorach. So I'm just going to send, looking at this, let's take a look at this. I will send the HQ down here. Now I could get these guys here faster, and that's fine. But the fact is I don't need them there faster. And there's some diplomacy type stuff that I want to do involving trade before any of that happens. So we're moving these guys in. It'll take them... So these guys are going... If I look at this division, I can hover over the little arrow. They'll arrive in Tübingen uh, on uh, 9th of January. So figure nine days per province. So sometime around the end of the month, they'll show up in Lorach. Now it's... It's not particularly critical, except as a point of German pride, that the Rhineland be reoccupied. If we look at the diplomacy tab again, and hover over the question mark, we'll see exactly what this does. Now it gives us, as I recall, we get 5 descent, we lose 15 in neutrality, which is sort of bad and is sort of good. Uh, we get a relations hit with a whole bunch of places. Uh, we gain cores on a bunch of stuff, uh, mostly in Austria. and. I don't see it on here, but I believe we get a bunch of money. Nope, that's the Anschluss. Um, we get, uh, we lose two in descent. We get 500 money, 250 manpower, and we gain two unity. National unity is this number, and it's fairly important too. And you can see it's ticking down right now. So the only thing we really need the money for at this particular time is to enact more laws, and we're in the green on money right now anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So we have our defensive line with France here. Okay. Now, the, on the French side of the border, we have the Maginot Line, which is a nigh impregnable line of... Actually, it's not that strong right now. These are only like ones. Well, they might build it up. Infrastructure's high, but uh, I don't really see it there. And I have some... I think there's some randomization in the start here, because I don't think I get... Uh, I got two fortifications here, so I'm going to build some land forts, however. On my side, I'm protected by this river, and this is, of course, the Rhine. So I'm going to, let's see what I have here. We have one fort, one fort, and these are the two weak points, because there's th they can just drive in. Uh, everything else is behind a river of some kind. So we're going to build an additional fort here, and an additional fort here. Now on top of that we need to look at infrastructure mode and this shows us the level of infrastructure in the entire country. Uh, we would like infrastructure here, it's at 80%. We're going to increase this as well. Uh, but we don't want to stack too much on here. If we look at our production queue now, this stuff will all show up in our production queue. So it costs 5.25 IC to make this land for it. It's pretty cheap to do the infrastructure. 
It's a little more important for the Soviets, to be honest. But uh, the Soviets don't start with the sufficient technology to actually do it. Let's see here. These are pretty low. All right, so I'm satisfied with that. Now I still have a ton of IC left here. We're now at uh, 81.56, and we're going to do an industrial capacity. We're just going to do one for now. It's 5.25 IC. We want to build up experience in building these kinds of things, our, our practical knowledge. If we look at, it, at technology, we can see that here's my construction practical. It's at 5.0, which is not... It's not nothing, but it's not very high. This will, if we get this up, it will reduce the time and the IC cost to build stuff that requires construction practical, which we would sure find useful. So in the meantime, though, we have a ton more military units to take a look at. So let's highlight any military unit, and then we're going to go through the Order of Battle browser and collapse all. Let's first of all take a look at the Navy, at the Air Force actually. Okay, so this is a tactical bomber. This is a an interceptor and a tactical bomber, which is dumb. Uh, and they are in Castle, is that correct? Yep. Okay, so we have this. We're going to basically put the entire Air Force here in... I guess I should check that first. Uh, air base capacity here is 10, which is the maximum, which is going to accommodate the entire Luftwaffe at this time. So we're going to send these uh, this air wing on a rebase mission to Castle, and we're going to look at whatever other air wings we have. Send them to Castle as well. And once they're all in the same place, we can reorganize them according to our desire. All right, I'm having trouble highlighting that for some reason. There we go. Something I've noticed happens in this game from time to time. Luftflotte 5 is right here. All right, that's already in Castle. So we have five air groups right now, and uh, that's fine. We'll take a look at the Navy. We have a submarine group, uh, the Schlachtflotte, and the same submarine group. So let's keep the subs here in Wilhelmshaven. We'll send the Schlachtflotte here to Kiel. And then we're going to have another uh, Unterseebootsflotte in here in Kiel that we'll send to Wilhelmshaven. And we're doing this more or less just to keep it organized. Now this, let's go back to the political mode so we can show you this. This is the port of Danzig. It is held by the Poles at this time. This is the port of Königsberg. It is held by Germany. This is East Prussia. There is no land route to East Prussia, so I need to build a uh, troop transports to get troops from here to here. And I do want more troops than this uh, for the invasion of Poland, which will happen around the scheduled historical date of uh, September 1939. We'll see exactly when that happens. So we need to put some transports in production. They are relatively cheap. We are going to put uh, three transports in parallel. That's almost 20 IC. Now, you know what? Let's, let's do three in serial. That's 13 months. We'll do four in serial. That's 18 months. I can live with that number. All right, you got to watch serial production because it, you'll, you'll see units start to come out and be re ready for deployment and then you'll expect your IC usage to go down and it won't because you're now making the next one. All right, we need a crap ton of air. So looking at our air forces here, we're going to put all air forces under Oberkommando des Heeres, which is the German sort of high command. Um, it's not really necessary that we do this, but it is. E it makes it easy. You know what? Let's do it this way. We can double up this browser and collapse all here. And then put them under Oberkommando des Heeres. And then we will take the entire Navy and put it under Obey Vest. Now, now we can see what we have here. We have this guy who's a tactical bomber. So we have one, two... 
three, four, five tactical bombers. Six, seven, eight tactical bombers. Which is actually more than we need. Uh, and then we have one, two, three interceptors. Now, they're not going where they are yet because the, cl the clock is currently frozen. So I'll reorganize those. So I have, did I say six? One, two, three. We, uh, we have six interceptors we need, by my reckoning, 21. So we need to make 15 interceptors. Aircraft don't take terribly long to produce, but they are fucking expensive. So we're going to do this in... five serial runs of three, and that's going to take 24 months, which puts us in January of 1938. I can live with that number. Let's start production on them. And our needed production, I see, for what we have in the queue right now is 112.14. We have 139.42. So let's go and make some divisions, and we're going to make some garrison divisions. Let's see here. Now this thing right here gives us like a combined arms bonus. Uh, but what we need, we, there are basically, there are hard brigades. Divisions are made of brigades. There are, and there are hard brigades and soft brigades. And one of these tells us that Teddy Bear, we are at 90% softness right now. 93% softness. Uh, let's see. 95% softness. So we're basically not really going to get a uh, uh, combined arms bonus from these units. I'm not sure I care because they are garrison units. Uh, I have no garrison units currently and I'm going to need 25 of them so we're going to make them make sure we make them as reserves. Twenty point six six that's approximately right. And this gives us Militia, militia, militia practical. Hmm, not sure I'm not sure I'm satisfied with that. I am allowed to have four brigades per division. There is a technology that I will get, uh, hopefully eventually, that uh, will let me have five. The softness number is no good, but there's really no but nothing else I can put in here. Um I kind of want the anti-aircraft in case they get attacked, um, but I really won't get the combined arms bonus. If I get rid of that, we're 100% soft. And the, the, the problem here is if I just put the AA in, then I'm at 80%. So this, is, this particular unit is like 80% soft. And then these garrisons are 100% soft. So I'm just going to go with my typical mix of three garrisons and an anti-aircraft. We'll do five serial, five parallel, 18 months, we can live with that. And that's going to put us at 132. We still have a little bit left over, so let's see what we can do. Uh, we need our land forts, we got our infrastructure in the pipeline, we got our artillery brigades in the pipeline, we have our IC in the pipeline. Let us make... Um, in order to determine what we're going to need to make, we need to actually take a look at our stuff. So let's break out the Order of Battle browser again. This is a great way to keep everything organized. So what we're looking for here are armored divisions. And we should have, here's one. I'm going to highlight this unit to select it on the map and then detach it from its current place in the hierarchy. And I'm going to detach this mountain division as well. Mountain division, actually, that's correct. And then this infantry division has an artillery brigade attached to it already. Okay, so that's all the armor in Obey Vest. And then we'll look at Oberkommando des Hires and take a look, look around for armor in here. There should be one, there is. We'll detach it, and that's probably all. There's this kind of useless cavalry unit, which I will also detach, just because I want to keep it as well organized as possible. Ah, we have this too. This is a quite effective panzer division. 
Okay, so now if we collapse all, we'll notice that uh, that these three units, three, four, five divisions, are kind of all by themselves. So we're going to... Can we mass highlight these? No, we cannot. Um, we're going to collect them, and we'll move them here to Grunberg. And once they arrive in Grunberg, we'll put them under their own HQ. And we have this mountain division right here. <coughs> so let's make another uh, couple brigades to fill that out with a mountain. Make sure we don't actually make 30 mountain brigades because that would that would suck. And then we need something else. Uh, we need something else, preferably with a four artillery. Uh, I'm liking artillery. Well, you know what? We got artillery coming. That's the, I don't need to do that. All right, and that puts us at 130. Uh, we need 134. We're making 139. We still have a little bit more to do here. So we've got our ship practical coming. We have some destroyers coming. We need to get. A battle cruiser. Now, here's here's the thing with capital ships. There's two important things with capital ships. One, they don't upgrade. You can't upgrade them. They're built. That's it. You can't upgrade anything on them except possibly crew training. I think you, that upgrade does take. Unlike everything else, where you can upgrade them out in the field. Um, the other thing is that they take a horrendous amount of time. So if we try to build a battleship, it's going to take 124 months, right? Now, this is because this is yellow. That's because I'm only putting a little bit of uh, production into it. So if we say do a light cruiser, it's, gonna, it's still going to be 50 months. Um, uh, but a submarine will only be 324 days. I'm going to put two submarines in production. We need them, so I'm perfectly okay. I need 12 subs. I have three right now, so that we've got two in production is perfectly okay. And now we'll see that our you'll see that our needed production is 143. We're actually putting 139.42 in. I'm actually okay with that being slightly in the red. Okay, so we are about 27 minutes in here, and as Germany, we are about ready to start the clock. So I am going to bring this episode to a close and I hope that you have found it not interminably boring and that will you'll join me in episode two which will be on its way as soon as I can put it together and get it uploaded so thanks for watching I'll see you next time